All right, hey everybody, this is Brian Evans with BT Web Group, and I am on a Zoom call with William Johnson, and William Johnson is a client of ours, a great client of ours. We love all of our clients. Uh, but William is a uh, very unique client because he is extremely, um, he's extremely addicted to education. And he's, he's constantly trying to improve his business. He's learning, he's asked, he asks more questions uh, and no questions are bad questions. So, uh, William, thanks for joining us. Uh, you run e-commerce businesses online and you sell products and services uh, through your e-commerce websites. But uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you're handling all the, the coronavirus with your business. Well, uh, Mr. Evans, uh, I've been in business mm, since October of last year. So uh, I went back to school for digital marketing and decided to go ahead and start my business through some advice from a friend at college. So uh, my friend had recommended me starting my business early and I did start in October. We laid the groundwork, laid the foundation. But uh, the thing about it is once I got things going, I got myself branded, got my logo right here at the beginning of the year, I, I don't think I've even been in business uh, six months. Yep. And now we have, you know, this COVID uh, issues. So it's got me a little shook up. But here's the thing, uh, I, I decided to take it slow in the beginning anyway. So I didn't want to like rush into it. I wanted to kind of build a, a solid foundation. So I started taking my time and I sought out experts like you to kind of guide me along that path. So right now I'm still in kind of a building phase, but the COVID has really made it like really hard for me to, I guess, access the resources that I need. Uh, and you know, probably know better than anybody that the first three years of a business is the hardest bit, uh, year or so. And uh, I'm still in my, maybe my sixth month. And uh, nevertheless, it's doing pretty good for, for launch. It's doing really well, uh, better than what I expected it to. But I mean, I'm here where I am. And like I said, if I needed more resources, it would be hard to kind of access that because of what's going on. Well, first of all, since I've known you, um, you've been nothing but professional and a gentleman, and uh, we appreciate your uh, relationship as a client with us as well. And I, I guess I would say, first of all, you need to pat yourself on the back because you're an entrepreneur and you're trying and you're working hard. And honestly, after the first three years, it's still going to be one of the hardest things you ever do because if when you become successful and more successful, um, it's, it's always an uphill battle. So, but that's what makes it fun because it's about the journey. And if you can help people along the way and still make money and feed your family, that's really what business is all about. Um, right. So I commend you for being an entrepreneur because uh, it's a, it's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Evans. <laughs> but so how, so I'm getting a little glitchy on my earphones. Is it, do you hear that or is it just on my end? Uh, I can hear it a little bit. A little also. bit. All right. Hopefully, uh -huh. it'll, hopefully it'll clear up. Um, I'm, otherwise, I might have to switch microphones. Um, tell me, what? Why did you want to become an entrepreneur first? Well, um, growing up, my my older brother, my oldest brother, he was big on Donald Trump. Loved Donald Trump. Read all of his real estate stuff. He got into investing real early, about eighteen. Now I'm six years younger than he is, so I'm still in the sixth grade. But uh, him and all of his buddies, that's all they talked about. I got to start my own business. I got to, you know, I need something to build and something I could call my own and something I could care about myself. And he really inspired me a lot. I mean, a lot. Um, of course, I didn't know all the terminology and all this kind of stuff. I didn't really close in like I, I should have. And during my teen years, he stayed on me about it uh, like an older brother should. But uh I kind of veered off and, you know, done some things. But anyway, he, he pulled me back in and eventually I got my head straight and um, kind of picked up from where I left off. So uh, I took an entrepreneur class in school. Uh, we had our own store in there and they let me do some commercials, some advertising, which had done uh, really well. So that kind of drew me in a little bit more. I still got some friends from high school and they still remember some, some of the things we've done. They talked to me on Facebook every now and then, kind of poke fun at me, but it did really well. Yeah. So I've always, always just had a desire. Um, I like the freedom. I love spending time with my family. 
I love traveling and doing things with my family and being in charge of my own time. And we work ministry, so I'm a minister. Uh, my wife and all my kids are involved in ministry. So the more time I have to dedicate to the things I really love, you know, um, the better I, I feel like I'll be as a person and the more I'll be able to help in my community and help those around me. Yeah, that's terrific. That's great. So what questions can I help answer for you right now regarding your business with the COVID-19 virus? Um, is there anything that I can do to help you or questions that you want to talk about since we're on the phone? Well, um, just I, from your standpoint, what, what do you think? Uh, I just got a couple of websites. They're going pretty good. I started a YouTube channel that you recommended. Uh, the views are taken off. I mean, it's Mr. Evans, I have, I think I've been started uh, maybe a week. And I got like 12,000 views. And basically, I took that, um, the vacation that we took to Las Vegas for my wife's birthday. I uh, took a lot of clips, put some music with it, and it, it took off because it's like, they teach us all this drama, uh, drama type stuff in school and how to put the music with the different pictures and everything. Yeah. But people are loving it. And I actually, I took that and put some links in there and it's really doing really well. But yeah. I guess my question to you would be, uh, if you were in my position, you know, what would be the steps that you would take right now considering the whole situation? Yeah, great question. I guess the first advice I would give anyone is to stay patient mm -hmm. and realize that we're in such a unique time that people are focused on survival and their mm -hmm. family more than anything else right now. And the last right. thing that people are thinking about is buying something other than toilet paper or food, most likely. Right. Right. So okay. when it when it comes to marketing and advertising your business, I would say just be patient as far as selling right now and be prepared that we're in a lull and it's going to come out of it. On the same token, I would say one of the best things you can start doing is working on your business and mm -hmm. make sure you're building your list. So okay. the, number, the number one asset in your business is mm -hmm. not the products or services even that you offer, but the number one asset is your list and the relationship that you can create with your list. With your, and when I say list, I, it can be referred to as existing clients past mm -hmm. clients, leads that have come into your business, prospects, people maybe you've sent proposals to, anybody that's a potential client or is a past client, current client, that's your list, your database, your client database. Okay. And obviously you wanna have as big a list as possible because that's how, that, those are people that are going to buy from you or recommend business to you, et cetera. But what's even more important is than the quantity of your list is the quality of your list, the relationship that you build with your list. So we had a client that we spoke with earlier on a Zoom meeting, and we tried to really pound home the fact that you've got to be doing things that increase and build the rapport and relationship with everyone on your list. So imagine if you just had one person on your list, mm -hmm. one person in your database. You would treat that one person like gold, right? right. Because they're just the one person. But that's not, always, that's not the case. So, but imagine that of all the people you have in your database, imagine that they are one person. And do everything okay. you can to help them, be there for them, answer their questions, provide great customer service and support. And the more you can do that and focus on building your list and developing that relationship, the more successful your business will be and every business will be for that matter. Okay. Because a lot of businesses I've seen over and over, they try to, they try to create another sale right? Mm -hmm. Give me another customer so I can create another sale and put money in the bank again. And then they're always right. out hunting for that next customer or that next client. But if okay. you can focus it not on creating a sale, but making that sale to get a new customer or client for life, that's okay. your long-term play. Okay. That makes sense because ideally what you want, and if you're providing a good service, that client or customer will want to buy from you over and over and over again and do business with you because they appreciate you and they want to do business with you. Whereas okay. a customer is somebody that might just do business with you one time and then they're forgotten. So you need to have a marketing process in place to build your list, develop a relationship mm -hmm. with your list, follow up with your list continuously to continue to mm -hmm. nurture that relationship and build more trust and rapport. Does that make sense? It makes great sense. Uh, I guess a question I would have about that also, what different ways would you go about trying to to build that list or develop that relationship as far as like on a personal level? Yeah, that's a great question. That's, that's the question of all questions. How do I build my list? Okay. Okay. 
there's, there's really two ways to do it. There's, there's the organic way and then there's mm -hmm. the, the paid way. Okay? okay. So the organic way to build your list is to create content, put out information on social media, hopefully put out good content for SEO where Google will want to rank your website. People go to your website and they want to, and you have to give them a reason though, when they get to your website to have them opt in to your email database or to your customer list. Okay. okay. So you mm -hmm. always have to give people a reason to join your list. So if, you know, for example, you, you run e-commerce businesses, so you might want to say, uh, opt in now or register now for 20% off your next order. Good for the next 24 hours. Right. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. going to be an incentive that somebody, when they visit your website, is going to say, well, yeah, I want to buy 20, I want 20% off. Um, and then they're going to join your list. You're going to have their information. And now you can use that incentive for hopefully they become a customer. If they don't though, you segment mm -hmm. that list of people on your, in your website and in your database to market and follow up with that. So, Hey, okay. I noticed you didn't use your coupon. No big deal. I'll tell you what, We'll extend it to you for uh, another 48 hours, okay? Okay. And if feel free to use it at that time. But, but you have to constantly communicate and segment and slice and dice your list based on how they came in and did business with you or inquired about doing business with you, okay? Okay. So that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's the organic way. The, the other way is, is the paid way, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically spend some money to get some customers. So run, okay. run, and there's two ways of advertising, inbound or outbound, but with a paid way, it's more outbound marketing. You're going to run pay-per-click ads or banner ads or something else to get people to raise their hands, say, hmm, that's interesting. I'm interested to learn more. They click on okay. your site, you pay-per-click, they go to your website, and then they hopefully opt in, but you have to give them a reason to opt in or to call you or to engage with you. Okay. The biggest mistake I see small business owners making is they don't invest money in their marketing. Okay. They do kind of like hope and pray marketing. Mm -hmm. They think that if they post more stuff on social media and online, which works, that mm -hmm. that's going to be the solution. The real solution is when you can figure out as a business owner how to mm -hmm. spend a thousand bucks for easy numbers. How do I spend a thousand bucks and have that thousand dollars generate 20 new leads or okay. however many new leads. And then of those 20 new leads, can I convert half of those into clients or customers or whatever the percentages are. So that way, after that marketing campaign that you spent a thousand dollars on, you're able to track it to make sure that you made more than a thousand dollars from the results of that marketing campaign. Okay. So once you're able to do that and track your return on investment, um, then you, you really hit something on the head, a nail on the head, and you can really start to scale your business. Uh, Point taken, Mr. Evans. <laughs> and it's uh, like I said, we're some of this we've discussed in uh, my class. Uh, we're doing demographics and psychographics, and we're learning how to read uh, analytical uh, data and see how the uh, client came in, what page they landed on, uh, the bounce rates. So we're looking at some things like that. So what really, like I said, it, my biggest thing. I'm a hands-on type of guy. So if I got someone I could kind of watch and listen to advice or mentor, uh, you know, I, I, it seems to stick better with me. So, and I'm glad I got someone like you, Mr. Evans, to kind of help me along those lines. <laughs> well, I'll do the best I can. You know, the, the website is just your online presence. It's just your online store. Right? Mm -hmm. But the whole purpose, you don't want people coming to your store and then not doing anything. You want people right. to come to your store, stick around, walk around, browse, and then engage with you, buy something okay. or, or request a resource. So mm -hmm. you need to make sure that your website and everyone's website, you need to make sure that it's set up for engagement. Give mm -hmm. people a reason to engage with you, to opt into mm -hmm. a list, to request a resource, to sign up for a newsletter, to pick up the phone and call, to pick up the phone and text, to send you an email, to fill mm -hmm. out some information. That's engagement. So okay. you need to be thinking not just traffic, but what you need to be thinking is conversion and engagement. So then every okay. hundred visitors that come to your site of those hundred visitors, how many of those visitors are, visitors are engaging with you, meaning converting to become a lead. And then of those conversions, how many of those conversions are became leads because they called, texted, mm -hmm. emailed, filled out a form, opted into mm -hmm. your newsletter, et cetera. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, 
you get your traffic online, but then get them offline and start developing a relationship with them. Okay. 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 Uh, do you, do you think, oh, it really helped. It really did. What about social media? What's, what's your feelings about? You know, I have a love hate relationship with social media, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, it, you know, it works. Um, it's where people go to engage now more than ever, especially with the COVID virus. But mm -hmm. I think it's a, I think it's a big fat waste of time personally. Okay. <laughs> uh, but you know, I'm not the person that'll go in and browse around and look for stuff. I'll hop on there every now and then and just look at some things. But mm -hmm. I think it's a time, it's a time waste for most people. I think probably most people would agree and that they do waste too much time on social media, but it's an addicting thing. So it oh, just yeah. depends on how you use it. Now, if you use it for your business purposes and you engage with people and people engage back with you based on the services your business provides, mm -hmm. then that's, then it's a good tool, right? Okay. It's, it's a great tool for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, but you just need to be smart about it. I just make, make sure you use it for the benefit of creating engagement and providing good value and resources to people that want it. Um, but you know, um, it's an, it's an, it's a love, I have a love hate relationship with social media. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, because in school they, they, they tell us a lot, a lot of people don't, uh, utilize social media like they should, uh, especially as big as Facebook is, uh, as big as, uh, Instagram and Snapchats and they seem like they got a new platform every month. So. I mean, and a lot of the younger generation, it, to me, it seems like, you know, that's where they gravitate to. Social media, um, William, is just a tool. It's just a one, tool. It's just a tool, mm -hmm. right? It's just one tool. And, and the goal being to generate customers, clients, and sales, you need to figure out how to use that tool in your business. But okay. I would also caution you to be careful to not rely too heavily on social media. Because okay. if, let's say you do something that Facebook doesn't like, and they mm -hmm. shut your business down, mm -hmm. it's happened. I've, I've seen right. it happen. Um, mm -hmm. Then you're stuck. There's nothing you can do. You don't own your Facebook page. You don't right. own your subscribers and followers. They, mm -hmm. Facebook owns them. So what you right. need to do if you're going to use it as a smart tool is post mm -hmm. stuff. I would say post a blog or an article or put stuff on your website. Share mm -hmm. that information, a link, uh, share that link on your social media which will then drive traffic back to your website from your social media followers. Your website okay. should then be set up to convert or engage those visitors with the form of resources or opt-in mechanisms to get them to want to join your database, your list. Now you're on to something. Okay. 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 So get your visit, get your subscribers off of Facebook, off of social media, drive them back to your website. And that way they can engage with you. They can opt into your list. Now you have control of that list. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, I get that completely. I really do. So, so like you said, it's a tool. Um, and I, I, I don't want to underutilize something, but I don't want to overutilize something. You know, I'm mm -hmm. trying to find the balance. And like I said, uh, a lot of this stuff in school, they, you know, and it's taught me a lot, but I, I also know that hands-on is the best, you know, watching people uh, that's already doing it, uh, not trying to reinvent the wheel, you know, I'm just trying to, trying to follow uh, someone I know that's successful, so. Yeah, well, but, I, but other than that, so, social media, when done right, can be a great tool, but just don't rely okay. on it 100%. Drive traffic okay. back to an asset that you own, which is your website, and then mm -hmm. get them to subscribe to your website or opt into your website, now you're on to something. Okay. okay. Same thing with YouTube, Instagram, whatever else. You can develop that relationship and have fun on, on social media and be a good resource to them. But it, it doesn't matter if you have a thousand subscribers, 2000 subscribers, a hundred thousand subscribers or a hundred thousand likes, if nobody's buying from you or if nobody's engaging with you further, okay. you know, likes and shares don't pay the bills unless, <laughs> unless you have tracking in place to basically be able to determine that that like or that share converted into a new client on your website. And you can do that as well by setting up UTM parameters and all your links. So that way when traffic comes back to your website, you know where that traffic came from. If it came from this blog post or something else or this social media post, you can track it. So you have to track everything. Tracking is key. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, another question I think I would have 
What do you think about uh, some of these programs? Have you heard any, anything about the programs that the government has given to people as far as like entrepreneurs that are struggling right now because of the COVID? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I'm going to say I'm not an attorney or CPA or any legal professional. I'm just a marketing guy. Okay. Um, but, um, you know, I would say from what I know about it, there's different programs for different people based on their needs. If you have employees, then you might want to look into the PPP program. If you don't mm -hmm. have employees and you're looking for small business loans, I know there's information like that. Uh, personally, we have employees here, so we are exploring um, the PPP program to see what kind of benefits we can get to keep our and retain our employees throughout this. I mean, there's no doubt that it's a challenge. Any mm -hmm. business that says they're not being affected by this, I I'd be shocked. I think everybody in the world is being affected by this on some yeah. level or another, especially small business. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think I would, in fact, we're going to be having and I could probably tell you more about this for sure, but we're going to be having another live webinar probably next week with a panel of uh, experts in their fields who are involved in human resources, an attorney, a CPA, uh, myself, and a couple other people. We're setting this up as we speak, and that would be a good webinar to get on to ask more okay. of those questions. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say talking to your bank, talking to an attorney or CPA, the, uh, the, uh, the government websites, the small business websites, all that information is on there. Uh, but I, I would absolutely, if it's something that's going to keep your business afloat and helpful during these times, I, that's what it's for. It's, it's, right. it's for small businesses to keep to keep operating. So, would you recommend? People, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I, I was going to say, how would you recommend people start a business during a time like this? Or, you know, I know we're stuck in the house a lot and we can't go out a lot and maybe funds are limited. So, I mean, would it be an ideal time to start a business? Depends on the business. <laughs> I <guess>. Okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think there's certainly some businesses that can do well in these times. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think there's any really great time to start a business. I, I would say for anyone that's thinking about starting a business, make sure you have income coming in from another source before you go all in on a new business venture hoping that that new business venture will pay your bills next month because that's, that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I would just recommend that start your business as a supplemental income to what you're already doing and then build up your business and set goals to where hopefully that supplemental income can now replace your existing income because it's right. dangerous and you have to be willing to take risk. You might have to whip out a credit card here and there and finance something yeah. or other. That's what small businesses do. That's what makes us great. It makes the world great, but it's hard, very hard. But the key is building your list, providing great service to your customers, engaging with your customers, developing relationships, listening to your customers, being there for them, selling your products and services because you got to eat. Everybody has to eat. And if you can do that in such a way where you're providing real value, then your business will do well. But you've got to be able to ride out these ups and downs for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so yeah, I would never discourage anyone from, from starting a business, even though it's now. Um, but this is a great time to be to think about how to improve a business and how to work on your business versus in it. Okay. Well, how do you, what do you think, like, the economy is going to be like after we come out of this uh, for us as digital marketers and those that are trying to build an e-commerce business? What, what do you think that platform will look like? You know, I think this is going to wake small businesses up and realize mm -hmm. that they need digital technology in their business mm -hmm. way more than they're using it now in order to mm -hmm. be more successful and survive long term. Okay? okay. You have to have digital technology. You have to have a good website. You have to be willing to do marketing. You have to build, you have to create your database. We mm -hmm. have a, we have a client who doesn't have a database, but has over 8,000 customers over a period of probably 40 years. Okay. Okay. But each of these customers was in a separate individual spreadsheet, okay? Mm. So he would create, mm -hmm. or his business, they would create a spreadsheet for each business, for each proposal, et cetera. Fortunately, we have some great smart tech people on our team, our CTO in particular, his name is Shane, and he was mm -hmm. able to take that information and create a script to pull and mm -hmm. scrape all the data out of all those spreadsheets and put them into one spreadsheet. So now 
the 8,000 spreadsheets are now consolidated into a database of 8,000 customers with mm -hmm. names, emails, addresses, phone numbers, et cetera. So now we can start marketing, marketing to them better, especially during this time. So we okay. actually even created some softwares that allow a business to send out mass text blasting, uh, a voice recording blast to their list, email blasting. That's obviously been here for a long time and everything has, but you got to communicate with your list and it's, it's impossible to do it one-on-one -on -one all the time, especially if you have thousands or hundreds of clients, but right. um, you can do it from a bulk perspective. So if you segment your list into specific categories, you can write messages or record messages specific to those people and let your clients know that you're here if they need help. That's really what it's about. We're here for you. If you need anything, let us know. So when it comes to marketing your business right now, you want your marketing message to be consistent with the times, okay. right? So you've seen people put out, you know, maybe social media messages that were, that were maybe quote unquote tone deaf, right? Well, you've got to be aware of who your audience is. So you've got to be mm -hmm. smart. So now's not the time to hard sell. Now's the time to say, if you need anything, I'm here. Right. How, can I, how can I help you? Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Really, it should always be that case. But mm -hmm. now more than ever is the time to really right. just, to be a friend, to, exactly. be, to be a lending hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, wise words, wise words. Because that's if in relationship, that's that's really the best way to build, you know, because it shows your dependability and uh, that you actually care. That's one of the things we actually talked about in class with building a relationship uh, with your clients, uh, social listing, uh, see not just you know maybe one client, but if you if you're getting all that information across several clients, you know there's got to be a problem somewhere. So try to deal with that problem. Let them know that you, you're listening to them, first of all, and that you met that need. So um, I appreciate that, Mr. Evans. It's, it's going to help me a lot. Good. But yeah, to, to piggyback some more on that question, technology is the future. It's already yeah. here. Small businesses, brick and mortar businesses that think that they don't need a website or an online marketing presence or anything else, they're sadly mistaken. You yeah. need that now more than ever. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Digital phone technology is coming. We've created some of that here. The landlines are going to be a thing of the past with, with fiber optic internet and everything else. I mean, you've got to be connected digitally. You've got to be able to work remotely. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, what we're all experiencing that now and the businesses that were prepared for that or that had some technology are the ones that are doing much better right now than, right. than the businesses that don't. Exactly. What do you think about uh, voice search? Uh, this new with Siri and Alexa, and things like that. Uh, how, how do you see that fitting into the picture here in the near future? Absolutely, I think those are things that businesses should 100% be thinking about. Uh, I'm, yeah. not a, I'm not a big Siri voice person really, except for when I'm in my car and I say, call my wife. Um, right. <laughs> but other than that, um, there are people that are. You know, right. Siri, mm -hmm. Siri uh, I'm hungry, where's the closest Chinese food? Or whatever, right? right? They, that stuff right. is real. Mm -hmm. So the exactly. businesses that try to stay on top of technology and use technology as a tool, you'll right. be way more successful. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So I, I'm, a, I'm a huge believer in technology from mm -hmm. the aspect of making the business more efficient. It, it can also make businesses and people more lazy, but <laughs> from a business perspective, I think it's, it's, it, there's probably nothing more important than really figuring out how to get your technology in place, which is what, we do, fortunately, as a company at BT Web Group. So, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's very okay. good. All right. I, I heard the reason I asked is I watched the video earlier and uh, this guy named Gary V, he was talking about branding and voice search and how big that was going to be. And it, it's not going to be about uh, who can rank top on the search engine. It's going to be uh, about uh, who's built the best brand. And like you said, who's got a relationship with the people and the people can speak well of the service that they've done and uh, things like that. But the vo the voice search, he says, is going to play a huge part in it. So hundred percent, no mm -hmm. doubt about it. And that's, mm -hmm. and that's just one of the things who knows what it, what's coming down the pipeline. Exactly. The, the key exactly. is to have a, a technology team that can help you with your digital technology and marketing. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the key. You don't have to learn it all. You don't have to do it all, but you have to have the right people on your team to help you stay on top of it and implement it for businesses. Very important. Okay. Very important. All right. 
So I've got to ask you this question. What's your, what's been your, your COVID-19 uh, bad habit that you've created personally? Have you created any bad habits? Any, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll I've got several here. bad habits. <laughs> well, that's I a good big, point. <laughs> that's a really good point. I, I like sweets, Mr. Evans, so uh -huh. I try to go out and stock, you know, stock up a lot. I haven't been getting the exercise. Me and my wife will take a walk every now and then around the block and uh, try to continue to practice social distancing, and we'll see somebody and we'll wave and we'll keep going. But uh, my biggest thing, I think, is going to get my Oreo cookies, my <laughs> ice cream, Make sure all that stuff is put back. And my wife is avid about me not going, oh, you don't. And I don't go out a lot. I just go out enough to get those things and make sure I've got those. But to me, those are essential. Yeah. So <laughs> I, it gives me a little sense of sanity uh, with, with all the things we're dealing with. And it, it is hard. It's hard sitting in the house. I'm the type of person who likes to go. I like to see uh, me and my wife are. We used to go to parks and walk the trails and nice weather. And I love nature, you know, getting the fresh air and everything uh, because I work at a plant. And so I'm at a, a Toyota factory all the time. Yeah. But um, staying in the house and trying to read more, work on my business, and then you'll find yourself snacking all the time. Yeah. Doritos. And, <laughs> and I try to make good choices, but, you know, when you're there and it's there in front of you, it's if you don't want it, don't buy it, but you know what I mean? <laughs> you and me both. You and me both. You, you know, it provides a little bit it provides a little bit of normalcy in the in the Yeah, I'm probably snacking a little bit too much. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I think right. I've, he I've heard of the quarantine fifteen or something. I don't know. Right. I, might, I might be pretty close to that, getting close. I don't right. know. Uh, but I you know, i I've been working from home every every other day. I'm actually in the office today. Nobody's here. It's 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 a graveyard here at our office, but um, you know, I, since nobody's here, I feel comfortable coming in, and just working in in our office. But it, it's good to get out of the house. So I would say, if you oh, have, yeah. have ability to do that, it helps it helps you clear mm -hmm. the mind sometimes. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely, definitely. But um, yeah. you know, I started watching the Tiger King, and I got about an hour and a half into it on Netflix, and I I couldn't stick with it. It got a little bit too um, uh, a little bit too honest for me. So uh, <laughs> my wife was saying that she just told me that before I came down and she said, uh, we need to start watching the Tiger King. I said, really? I never heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. She, she, we've been doing a lot of that. It's good. It, there's, in spite of this bad situation, there's a whole lot of good things. I, I kind of see this coming out of it. Um, like you get to spend a whole lot more time with your family uh, for one, because like I said, with my busy schedule, trying to build a business, uh, working at, Toyota and all the hours they required and come home and work on my business didn't try to do school and then try to do ministry I think it's, it's given a lot of us uh, a time to sit and kind of reconnect uh, kind of focus on the things that are really important you know uh, which is being a neighbor being a good friend uh, building a solid family those things that build good foundations 100%. so and I, I, I just kind of you know even with the government uh, stepping in. I'm thankful that we have a, a federal government, uh, state, local, that are all chipping in. Businesses are chipping in. Uh, the business I work for, Toyota, they let us off and they paid us uh, for a little while. I mean, they're, they're kind of working with us to kind of help us all get through uh, what's going on, the hard times. So it's, it's, it's been, a, like I said, it's, it's a really bad situation, but I see some good things also being developed within that so yeah. the silver lining if you would i agree it's a, you're the eternal optimist and i like that about you <laughs> well where can people find out and learn more about you lee you um, got a you have a couple websites and youtube channel and some other things i have a uh, facebook page uh, johnson marketing solutions uh i have a, a youtube channel under the same brand you can find me under william johnson or uh, johnson marketing solutions um, so you can find out the information about my website, a little bit uh, more about my background, my bio. Uh, it's all on those. So, okay. And you have a couple of e-commerce sites. Did you want to share those or can people find those? Um, uh, one of my sites, well, it's uh, emergency preparedness kits.com. Okay. Uh, emergency uh, has a hyphen in it. So make sure to put the hyphen after the emergency 
uh, then preparedness And then the other one is buy rustic, uh, buy rustic home decor.com. Okay. So, and I have a Facebook page for both of those also with a, a little bit more information. We've got blogs, uh, videos, articles, and a shop in the back after you read up on all the, uh, the articles that I have and then I watch the videos. So a lot of good content there. Good, good. Well, listen, I appreciate you taking the time to jump on this video conference. I think it'll hopefully be beneficial to anybody that gets a chance to watch it. Uh -huh. Of course, if you need anything, let myself, let our team know we're here for you. And um, yeah, I appreciate your time. You have a, you have a great day. All right. I appreciate you also, Mr. Evans, the, the wisdom that you shared. So I really well, do. Uh, thank you. I appreciate our friendship. So William, you have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. You too. All right. All right. Bye-bye. All right.